In this video, we're going to define what's called a one-to-one -one relationship. And this is one of the simplest relationships that you're going to come across, but it's super handy, super cool. And now let's think of a situation where we might actually use it. So if you've ever had a user object that just gets completely out of control, so for example, you might start off with an email address, and then you might have a name as well. Okay, that's pretty standard stuff. But then all this other stuff creeps in there and you might end up with a bio because maybe they have a bio page as well. And then maybe there's like a life goal that you wanna have attached to that user as well. And then eventually your user object just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So since you're a good programmer, you split things out and you create a profile. And then we come in here and then we can just grab these two things here and throw that into the profile, okay? So you probably know the story, and if you don't, this is something that you will probably come across at some point in your programming, where something will get really big and you reach a point where you really need to split that data up. All right, so now that we've split the data up, this profile needs to know about the user, and the user needs to know about the profile. They need to know that they're linked together. So what we do is we use the user's ID, okay? Because usually these objects are going to have an ID in the database. And the profile also has an ID. And then on the profile, we let it know that it belongs to a user. Okay, I'm gonna say that again, that it belongs to a user via a user ID field. Okay, so the ID on the user might be 22, which means we know this profile belongs to the user if its user ID is also equal to 22. Now with Vux ORM, we can define this relationship and make it really easy to link these two pieces of data together. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. But first, here's just a quick example of what the request might look like. So maybe you make a request for the user, okay? And then that user will have a name that might be Luke. And then it might have an email that might be Luke at LDBold. Whoop, can't even spell my own name ldbot.com, and then nested in that will probably have a profile as well if you're fetching this from the server, all right? And then if that, of course that's gonna have a bio with some data, that's gonna have life goal with some data, and then that's gonna have a user ID with some data as well, which would be 22 if this ID is equal to 22, okay? So in fact, from the server, you might not even get the user ID in there. It might just nest the data in there and not even give you a user ID, but we'll leave it like that for now. So this is an example request that we're going to use in this project. So first thing we need to do is create a profile and create a user. So let's dive right in and do that. We're gonna go into the item, Control Shift P, duplicate, and this one is gonna be called user. And the entity name will be users, the plural of user, okay? And if we go back to what our data looks like, whoop, here it is here, we have a name and an email and an ID for the user, okay? So let's change that to name. Let's change this to email. And we have an ID. Now, we're gonna use something different with the ID this time. We're going to say increment, meaning that VUXORM is automatically going to set an ID that hasn't been used for us if we don't supply it with one. So if we give an ID of 22, for example, it will set it to 22. If we give it nothing at all, then it's going to set the ID to something that it will come up with on its own and just make sure that it doesn't have a duplicate ID there. All right, cool. So that's the user. The other thing we need to build is the profile, which has a bio, a life goal, and the user ID. So let's just copy that. We're going to duplicate the user and say, bio, or maybe bio is a bad name for it. Let's, say, let's call it a profile, that's probably better because it encompasses more things. So duplicate that and we'll call it a profile. Now we need to change the class name to profile, entity to profiles, the plural of profile. And now this is going to have an ID and all of these other fields as well. So bio, we'll say this dot, attribute is equal to that. Now, by the way, rather than just saying attribute, we can say this dot string. And what that will do is convert whatever we get into a string. Now, I don't use this very often. And the reason is, if the server gives me the value null, this will convert 
null into a string like this, okay? Which is usually not what I want. So I usually just say attribute and let the work, um, let the server do the work for me. But that's totally up to you, okay? So life goal, this is going to be an attribute as well as an empty string. And you can also do that with numbers. So it could be a number as well. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll review a lot of that later on. And then the user ID as well, which will be this dot attribute. And we'll have that as null by default. There we go. Now listen closely, because this is where we're actually going to define the relationship. So I like to create a little comment here saying relationships, just to break things up. So I can see that these are the actual attributes I'm going to get. These are the relationships. And now a profile belongs to a user, right? And a user has one profile. So if a profile belongs to a user, it makes sense that we would write it like this. If we're trying to get the user, we say this dot belongs to a user. And so now we're going to have to import that, scroll up, and we've imported the user there. And now we need to know through which field the profile belongs to the user. And so we pass through user ID. So that's this field here, because if it were, um, I don't know, something else, like something else ID, then we would use that instead, okay? So this profile belongs to a user, okay? And the opposite of that is that a user has one profile. So we're going to jump into the user class here now. Same thing, relationships. And a user, if it's fetching its profile, we want to say this dot has one profile. Whoops, profile. <laughs> there we go. So let's scroll up, cross that out. I don't like to um I don't like to have these semicolons. If anyone knows how to get rid of that when you're doing imports, then please let me know. And of course, we need to know how it relates to the profile, and that's with the user ID. So once again, this right here needs to match up with the profile's user ID, okay? That's how these two are going to be able to find each other with this line of code here and this line of code here, okay? Awesome, now that we've got our relationships all set up, we have the freedom to actually use them. This is the exciting part. So we're gonna go into app.view, I'm gonna scroll up here. Um, we've imported the user and the profile. I can't remember if I did this in this video or if I did that earlier. But anyway, we're going to need to import the user and the profile. So now let's scroll down here and we're going to say before mounted, all right? And we're just gonna mock the data. So usually you would get this data from a server, but we're gonna say before mounted and just throw in some dummy data. Okay, so we're going to say now user.insert. This is what we looked at in the past video. And the data, is going to have a name which is equal equal to Luke, an email which is equal to Luke at ldbold.com, which happens to be my email. And we're also gonna give it an ID and I'll just set that to my age, which is 28. So we've inserted the user. Next thing we wanna do is insert a profile. All right, so let's say profile, we'll import that. Did that work? Oh, that's right, we've already got it there. Okay, so profile.insert, and what do we need on the profile field again? We need the ID, the bio, let's just copy this through. Life goal, user ID. Okay, we're not gonna need to grab this. Go in there, paste them in. Put in those colons, and now let's set these values. The ID could be anything, it could be something like 55. Bio, Luke is a web, Developer, that's right, I am, exclamation mark. And life goal is to have my own team of developers that create products that help change the world for the better. <laughs> Bit verbose there. All right, so there we go. User ID, now this is the important part. The user ID on the profile needs to match up the ID on the user that we're inserting, okay? That's how this relationship is actually known, okay? So that's gonna be set to 28 as well. So I'm gonna save that. Now let's actually fetch the user. We're gonna start things simple and make it gradually more complex. So user, 
And this is something new, so get ready. User.find, and then we're gonna pass through the ID, which is 28. And what this will do is just dive into the users and find a user with the ID of 28, okay? And you don't have to do .get after doing a find. It automatically does .get for you because it already knows exactly what it's looking for. Anyway, so now we have the user and we can use it because we have it as a computed property. So let's scroll up, have a H1. Let's give it something really sexy like style is equal to color orange. <laughs> It's gonna be really ugly, but I promise we're gonna make something beautiful at the end of this course. So meh, I'll make up for it. And now we can say user.name, save, open this up. Now we've got a problem here. That's all right, we love problems. This.getters is not a function for model.find. So let's scroll down there, user.find. Ah, so the problem is, that we never actually registered these classes into the database. So VUXORM doesn't even know about them yet. So if we go into the store, we can copy this down twice, change that to user, change that to profile. So we're going to import the user and the profile, copy this down twice, set that to user. So the database is registering the user and the profile. And I reckon that's gonna fix our bug. So let's refresh the page there. We also need to change this from before mounted to before mount, I bet you caught that. And of course, we actually need to return this. So just a couple of errors that I had there, but I think that'll fix it up. There we go, so it seems to be working now. So we've got Luke, awesome. Now what we can do is actually query the data. So we'll say user.query and we'll say dot with profile. And that is going to bring in the profile with the user. And then we can say dot find at the end of that, the user with an ID of 28. So let's save that, refresh the page, everything's working. Let's see if we can actually use this data now. So if I jump in here, put in a P tag, and we say user dot profile dot bio. Let's see if that comes up. And it does. How awesome is that? And the cool thing is, this is all totally reactive. So no matter how nested this data gets, it's still going to work. It's still going to update on the page, which is unbelievably cool. All right, so moving on, let's have a look at the inverse of this relationship. Let's change this to profile. And we're going to return the profile with the user. So basically we're doing the exact opposite now. And we wanna find the profile with an ID of 55. Cool. All right, so we're gonna to have to go up here and change a couple of things now. Instead of user.name, we're going to say profile.user.name. And we're going to say just profile.bio. Save that, refresh the page, and everything still works. How cool is that? Now, it gets even better. So check this out. I talked about this earlier, but now I'm gonna show you. When we insert the user here, we can actually insert the profile at the same time. So because of those relationships that we set up earlier, I can now just grab all of this, whack it in there. So you can imagine we only need to do one trip to the server and we can grab all of this in one request and it will automatically create the profile for us. So this will actually still work. VUXORM is diving in there, noticing that it's got a profile and that it's, the profile is related to the user and automatically flattening it out for us. So unbelievably cool. Now it gets even cooler. We don't even need this user ID because what it'll do is say, all right, this user with an ID of 28 has a profile. So I know that that profile must have a user ID of 28. It already knows that and is able to infer it from there. So now I can actually delete this, save it, and it still works. Unbelievably cool. And you know what? Why not push this a little bit further? So as I said before, data doesn't actually have to be an object. It can be an array of objects. So if you've got a massive request with like a whole bunch of users that have profiles, we can do that as well. So let's just paste this straight in here. 
Here we go. And now I'm gonna copy that down and just create another version of this data. And I'm gonna use my girlfriend, Shannon. Shannon at, I'm just gonna say example, probably shouldn't throw in her email address. Um, so let's give her an ID of 27. A profile ID is going to have to be different. Let's set that to 65. So bio, Shannon is awesome. And life goal, let's just do this quickly. Um, join the UN and help change the world. All right, so there we go. We got another example uh, of a user with a profile. So let's start off by grabbing my profile. So my profile has an ID of 55. This should still work. Refresh the page and it does still work. Now Shannon's profile is 65. And there we go, now we've got Shannon's profile. Hey, let's make this even cooler. What if we say profile Z, so all of the profiles, and instead of saying find, we say dot get. We can get rid of that. And what this will do is give us an array of profiles with users inside them. So now we can do cool stuff like this. Let's throw all of this into a div, like that, and iterate over the profile. So we can say v-4 profile in profiles, and now we're gonna need a key. That's all right, we have the ID. Key is equal to profile.id. And now we can say profile.user.name, profile.bio. We can leave all that the same, save it, refresh the page. Look at that, how awesome is that? Like the functionality that we get out of this is phenomenal, and the code is just so beautiful to write. I mean, Vuk's ORM, and by the way, this is all going to be a request. You're not going to like throw it straight in the before Mount Hook. Um, but just think about how beautiful this code is. We're grabbing all of the profiles with the users, and now let's get that, all right? And if you didn't add get, you could then like build off that query as much as you wanted. And you could have like a whole bunch of functions that build up this query. But anyway, I digress and get ahead of myself. So look at how beautiful and fluent that is to write. That combined with the beautiful fluency of view code and you end up with quite a bit of functionality. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. By the way, we have just scratched the surface. This is a one-to-one -one relationship. I can't wait to show you a one-to-many relationship in the next video. So in that video, we're going to go back to lists and items. So for example, a list will have many items and we're gonna explore what that will look like with Vuk's ORM in the next video. Thank you so much for giving me your attention. I really appreciate it, guys. See you then.